We've just heard a wonderful talk from Helen about the PDB and we're going to switch back the focus now and look at the CSD and some of the structures that have been shared in the CSD over the last 50 years. So the CSD, since its launch in 1965, has captured the achievements of crystallographers worldwide and it really is something the entire crystallographic community should be proud of. But what everyone wants to know, and we're always asked about, is the headline figure. How many entries are there in the CSD? And I can tell you, as of today, there are a whopping 784,428 entries, which is really a huge achievement. So what I wanted to do before we journey through the CSD is look back at what the world looked like in 1965. So in 1965, the average house price in the UK was just £3,360. So um, if house prices hadn't changed since then, I think we could all afford a house. Surprisingly, the number one single in 1965 was Tears by Ken Dodd. So that's what everyone was listening to. Perhaps a little less unsurprisingly, everyone was flocking to the cinemas to watch The Sound of Music. Um, one of the number one news stories of the year was the Voting Rights Act in the US. In the world of chemistry, then um, Woodward was winning his Nobel Prize for the synthesis of complex organic molecules. And a number of years later, with the help of nearly 100 um, students, he went on to publish the synthesis of vitamin B12. In the world of crystallography, then Dorothy Hodgkin and co-workers had already published the structure of vitamin B12 in 1964. And this is her structure in the database. And this is uh, the ref code associated with it, which Olga and Ian have already talked about. So in the world of crystallography, there were 656 structures published during the year from quite a diverse range of publication sources, so 64 in total. But the predominant place to publish crystal structures was perhaps unsurprisingly actor crystallography. The average cell volume was 1,649 angstroms cubed, and the average R factor of the structures published during that year was 13.5%. Perhaps unsurprisingly, in the era before um, SIFs and electronic data, then only about half of the structures determined we've actually got coordinates for in the database. And you can see here the growth of the number of structures published up to and including um, 1965. So that's 1965, but how has the world changed? Well, house prices have predictably gone up, um, and they're now at about 180,000 is the average house price, but I'm sure those of you that also live in Cambridge know that's not the average for Cambridge at the moment. Um, apparently, we're all listening to Tiny Temper, and we've all been enjoying The Hobbit at the cinema. There's been a lot of news stories, obviously, this year already, but one of the things that might have passed you by is the fact that this year, year saw the record for the uh, most expensive painting ever sold, and that record was 180 million US dollars. So just imagine how many houses you could have bought back in 1965 with that. Um, in the world of chemistry, then we've already seen the synthesis of the first controllable um, molecular metal shuttle, which is depicted here. Um, 3D printing is becoming commonplace, and in the next couple of weeks, you'll be able to um, export a file directly from Mercury to enable you to print all of your 3D crystal structures. Um, experiments and technology has also changed, and so now you can even buy a desktop diffractometer. Um, another thing that's um, quite big at the moment is open data, and there's been a drive to make data more accessible. And one thing that you might not know is that you can now access crystal structures on your mobiles and your tablet devices. So I'm going to make sure you're all awake by asking you to do something for me. I want you to all get your mobiles or tablet devices out, or computers, and I want you, if you've got internet access, to connect to the internet. Once you're there, I want you to Google Get Structures, and the top hit in Google, if you Google Get Structures, takes you to the CCDC page. And on the CCDC page, you'll see three boxes, and in the third box, you can enter a ref code. And we're going to be seeing lots of ref codes pop up during this talk, and the first one that you can enter and visualise the structure for is this one here, IHABAW. 
So what I hope you're going to do is play along with me as we go through the talk, and you never know, there might be a prize for the person that views the most structures. So back in crystallography, there's been nearly 27,000 structures published this year already from a lot um, bigger set of publication sources, so 241 in total. And there's no um, journal leading or dominating anymore. It's spread um, over the top journals a bit more widely. The average cell volume has over doubled in size since 1965, and the average R factor has decreased by over a half. Thankfully, in the year of electronic data, we're getting coordinates for actually all of the structures in the CSD as well. And you can see here the near exponential um, growth rate of the CSD over the years. So that's 1965 and 2015, but what's happened in between and what other structures are in the database? Well, we're going to jump back now to 1936, and this is one of the first structures published um, with 3D coordinates. This one was by Robertson, and there was also a structure published in the same year by Linus Pauling with this ref code here. <coughs> Just one year later, in 1937, Robertson went on to publish the first structure um, with coordinates as a metal organic structure, and here's the structure depicted here. So 80 or nearly 80 years after the first structure with atomic coordinates was published. We've now got over three quarters of a million structures in the database from hundreds of thousands of different publications, from thousands of literature sources and from hundreds of different publishers. And as the number of structures in the database grows, the number of authors associated with each structure is also growing. And you probably can't quite make it out, but at the moment, the average number of authors per structure is five. But some structures obviously have a lot more authors than that. And this is the structure with the most authors associated with it. It's actually got 50 authors. And when you read the paper, you can see why. It's about a hepatitis C drug that's hopefully just coming onto the market soon by Bristol Myers Squibb. So we've got over 300,000 author names in the CSD, but where are people depositing their data from? Well, you can see, as expected, we're getting lots of definition, depositions from countries like the UK, Japan, and America. But we're also seeing lots of deposits now from places like China and India. And with over 130 um, countries depositing data, we also see countries like Algeria, um, Kenya, and Mozambique. So we can see where deposits are coming from, but who are they coming from? Well, this gives a word of the most prolific authors in the CSD. And it's my pleasure to see some of you in the audience. I've already spotted Mike, um, Simon, and Judith, and many more of you here today. So it's lovely to have you here. Um, a lot of you have obviously got crystal structures in the CSD, and some of you are going to see your structures popping up as we go through this talk. And here's just a flavour of some of the structures that have been deposited by people in the audience. Um, so some of the crystallographers out there are going to recognise your structures, but some of the current and past editors are also might recognise some of the structures as they have curated into the CSD. So do keep your eyes peeled. So where is data being published? Well, it's obviously changed over the years and different um, journals emerge. Um, at the moment, the top three are Inorganic Chemistry, Dalton and ChemCom, and that's where most of the structures are being published. So um, ACS and the RSC are really leading the way at the moment. But it's really nice to see that uh, structures are being published in high, really high impact publications as well. So the number of structures published in journals such as Science, Nature and PNAS has really taken a dramatic increase since the 2000s. Also on the increase is the number of structures that would otherwise be unpublished that are shared through the CSD as private communications. Last year saw the record number of private communications added to the CSD in a single year, and this year we've already topped that figure, which is really great to see. Um, some of our depositors share a lot more crystal structures through the CSD as private communications, and here are our top private communication authors. And you might not know that we're really close to hitting a record of the author getting to 1,000 private communications. So some of you out there that see your names quite big, you might want to speed up your deposition. <laughs> <coughs> 
So now we're going to look at some of the structures and how the structures have changed over the years. Um, obviously, we're getting more structures, but the complexity and the size of the structures has also changed, and it's on the increase. And a simple way to look at this is by looking at molecular weights. <coughs> you can see that for the metal organic um, structures, the, the weights are getting bigger and they continue to get bigger. Whereas for the organic structures, they got bigger and now they're starting to level off slightly. Most of the large structures in the database are obviously now coming from things metal organic structures, polymeric structures, but we also get some quite big organic structures and here's an example of one of those large organic structures. As the number of structures increases and the size of the structures increases, obviously the number of atoms we've got coordinates for is also on the increase and this is obviously increasing at a lot faster rate than the number of structures in the CSD. So another thing that we can look at is cells. Um, and the prize for the structure with the largest cell length goes to BibJAS um, with a whopping 225 angstrom unit um, cell value. And this is it depicted here. It was so big it only just fitted on my slide. Um, moving on from cell lengths, we can look at cell volumes. And carbon dioxide is the structure with the smallest cell volume in the database. And this is one of the largest, the zeolite structure. And if we compare the two on a scale diagram, you can see that carbon dioxide is really being dwarfed by this huge unit cell. So you're looking at lots of different structures and you're looking at bigger structures, but you're also working your way through the periodic table. So in the 1920s, structures were being looked at that contained these atoms, highlighted in orange. And then in the 1930s, there was a big expansion of atoms, that were, atom types that were being looked at. In the 1930s, um, you added a few metals. In the 1950s, a few heavier um, things. In the 1960s, perhaps unsurprisingly, you focused your efforts on more exotic elements. In the 1970s, lanthanides and actinides were added to the list. In the 1980s, we saw the first noble gas in a crystal structure. And the recent additions have been some more noble gases. So there's not that many left to get. Um, some of the more recent ones that have um, been found are uh, some of these structures. And in this structure, you can see the helium is actually encapsulated into a fullerene. And that's um, a similar structure exists for the Krypton structure too. So maybe that's a route to go down if you want a new um, structure with a new element in it. With so many structures and um, so much data, we can also find interesting facts out about crystal structures and about crystallographers. So here you can see a leaderboard of our... Um, our speakers and how they rank on the different element types in the CSD. So if you want to know how you rank, then do come and speak to us and we can find out. Uh, we can also find out things like which structure's got the most different atom types. And currently there are four structures with 11 different atom types in the structure and here's one depicted here. So I'm not quite sure what applications this has and I'm not quite sure whether they're just going for the record or not. The CSD still throws up some puzzles, and back in 1996, Jack Dunnitz and others observed that the number of molecules with um, an even number of carbons clearly outweighs the number of molecules with an odd number of carbons, and I think this is still a puzzle today. With so many structures, we can also look at crystallographic information, and we can see trends emerging. If we look at space groups, then we can see that the um, number of structures published in PBAR1 is now at about 25%. And we can also see the most common space groups that occur in structures. This structure here is um, a structure in the rarest space group. So it's the only structure with 3D coordinates in P42MC. We can also see changes in technology reflected in the CSD. So this chart here shows um, the different study temperatures over the years. And you can see when cryostreams first started to be used in the 1990s and their rapid growth of um, low temperature structures. In 2001, the number of low temperature structures started to outweigh the number of room temperature structures. And here you can see a boron structure, um, one of the early low 
temperature structures. And on your right, you can see one of the highest high temperature structures which actually undergoes a phase transition. Um, not everyone gets everything right all of the time. Everyone knows that. Um, and one of the more um, funny things that we see um, that's incorrect in data is that in deposited files, we often see structures that were apparently determined above the melting point of the crystal structure. Not quite sure how that is possible, but that's one of the more trivial things that we correct as we enter structures into the database. As technology and software is changing, obviously the reliability of structures has changed over the years too. And now the average R factor is pretty constant and has been for a while at roughly 5%. And here's one of the lower R factor structures in the um, CSD, but I'm sure all of you crystallographers out there have got lower, right? <coughs> um, so as software and technology changes, and has changed over the years. The number of structures that have hydrogen atoms located has also changed. And the graph here with the green and the red parts shows the structures with and without hydrogen atoms modelled on a logarithmic scale, so you can see the difference. The, oops, the blue line is on a linear scale, and that shows the percentage of structures without hydrogen atoms modelled. And today, we get less than one structure in 200 that, doesn't, that has any hydrogen atoms that have been unlocated. Probably in the early days, then these structures were probably mostly from neutron diffraction studies. But the same can't be true today, because if you look here, the number of structures published from neutron diffraction has remained relatively constant in a bumpy way since the 1970s. We can also look to see how many structures have got disordered modelled. And you can see that this continues to rise. If the growth rate continues on, um, with the same rate, then by 2055, half of the structures that get deposited will be disordered. And by 2155, all of the structures will. Um, there are still some things, despite the wealth of data in the CSD, that are hard to predict. And here you can see some of the structures that contain um, lots of independent molecules um, in the structure. So this is still quite hard to predict. And to highlight that, I've got two molecules. In the first molecule, we look in the database and we see that it's got one independent molecule in the asymmetric unit. So if we were going to guess from this, what, how many independent molecules this um, structure would have, then I think I would guess one. But if we look in the CSD, then it's actually got six stacking molecules and a seventh perpendicular molecule. So there's actually seven molecules in the asymmetric unit. So I still think there's a way to go before we can start predicting structures um, reliably. In the CSD, we can also look at how um, what kind of crystals are being used in crystal morphologies. So you can see the most popular or most common crystal morphologies here with things like prisms, blocks and plates. But there's also another category. So in that other category are the usual suspects like um, rod, cube and things. But there's also some more quirky examples. And some of my favourites are fishbone, lentil and probably a personal favourite, penguin. <laughs> So some of you are quite imaginative, I think. Um, the other thing that we can do is look to see how crystal size has changed over the years. And in the last 14 years, the size of the crystals reported in the SIF have um, more than halved. Moving on from morphologies, we can look at colours. The most common colour is unsurprisingly colourless, uh, followed by yellow, red and orange. But we've also got this other category. And I think maybe the other category might say more about the crystallographer than it does about the crystal. So we've got lots of wine-coloured crystals, a few cognac, and lots of chocolate. But I think my favourite crystal colour is still raspberry blue. <laughs> <coughs> we can also look at trends in things. Um, so we can look at trends in what solvents are used. And we can do that by looking at what solvated structures are in the database. And you can see here, fashions have changed over the years, and it's quite hard to pick out any current trends. But if we take two snapshots, then we can see that um, things like uh, solvents of DMF have gone up 
over from 1984 to 2014. One thing that has started to level off a bit is the percentage of hydrate structures in the CSD. And this graph here shows that it's now we're getting about a third of the structures are hydrated these days. But some structures obviously contain a lot more water molecules than others. And these are some of my favorite watery structures, which I think look really good. Um, we could look at the CSD in a totally different light. What we could do is look um, at the drug molecules. And this poster shows the top 200 drug molecules. And in green are the structures uh, are the drug molecules that correspond to structures in the CSD, with grey corresponding to PDB structures. And you can see that we really do have fantastic coverage of pharmaceutical molecules in the CSD. So maybe if you eat the CSD, you could cure yourself of quite a few ills. But it does actually have a darker side, and I think you might kill yourself before you cure yourself. So it contains lots of um, poisons, um, herbicides and pesticides too. It also contains lots of aromatic structures. I was quite surprised to find out that over three quarters of the structures in the CSD actually have aromatic bonds. And if we just look at the top 150 small molecule drug molecules, then over 84% contain aromatic bonds. And this year saw the record for the structures with the most aromaticity in it. Um, and that record um, took over from a structure published the year before by the same group. There's also some quite wonderfully complex molecules in the CSD, and this shows some interlocking structures, including the so-called olympodiane. There's also some more trivial examples of um, interesting structures in the CSD. So we, of course, have some nanoputins in the CSD, and this chef is a fine example. If you look hard enough, you can find the Star Wars TIE Fighter, and you can see here a 3D printout of that structure. And we also have um, packing on a molecular scale. So you can see this neat um, packed crystal structure as well. Because we've got so many structures, we can have a structure for every day and every event. And the first structure here is one of the early structures by Olga Kennard, who we saw earlier. We're obviously all gathered today in Downing College, and we could relate a structure to Downing College. And some of you might not realize it's National Ginger Snap Day. So we could have a ginger snap um, structure too. So maybe we're going to celebrate in coffee by having ginger snaps. CSD 50 is obviously celebrating the golden anniversary of the CSD. And there's lots of gold structures in the database. But here are three examples. I quite like to look at the extraordinary and out of ordinary structures in the database and here are two examples of those. So this structure has got a really long carbon-carbon single bond whereas this has got a really short carbon-carbon single bond. Um, but you have to be really careful if your structure isn't normal. So this structure was done in 1973. and just this year was redetermined because they didn't know whether that was a believable carbon-carbon bond. And when they looked at it, if you look at the um, distribution of the bond lengths in the CSD using Mogul, you can see the original structure was well outside the normal distribution. And the new structure has got a slightly shorter bond length. It's still quite long, but it just fits on the edge of the distribution. There's also lots of seminal structures in the CSD. Um, and you can see the rise of porphyroids in the CSD over the years. You can see when cholesterol was first determined and how many structures are in there. And you can see the rise of ferrocene. So now over 10% of metal organic structures in the CSD contain ferrocene. But I think my personal favourite is the buckyballs. And these are getting more and more complex. So if we look at the, some of the fullerenoids um, and the complex ones, I think these are some of my favourite structures in the CSD. But I'd quite like to know what your favourite structures are. So what we did, we looked at what common searches you do of WebCSD. So you can see that people are searching for things like ferrocene. But you can also see that some of your favourite structures might be fullerene too. We can also um, look to see what your favourite structures are by seeing what's viewed in WebCSD the most. So the top viewed structure in WebCSD when we looked at a sample of data was lamotrigine, which is one of the approved drugs in the CSD. And it also happens to be the half a million structure added to the CSD. The second highest um, viewed structure is this 
um, MOF structure, MOF5, which is linked um, from the MOF or MIX website at Princeton University. Um, and there's also different ways you can view each individual structure. So you can see here the view of the structure in the publication. You can obviously view the structure through crystallographic uh, visualisation software such as Mercury. And coming soon, you'll be able to print it out too and view it in 3D. Um, so another thing that we can look at is we started assigning digital object identifiers or DOIs for short to all of the um, data in the CSD and we can look to see which DOIs are most used. So when we looked at these for January we saw that the top um, four most used DOIs actually corresponded to things that were done on our own social media campaign. So we have something called Feature Structure Friday that we advertise and um, about on things like Facebook and Twitter and they were the most viewed DOIs. The fifth DOI is actually from a blog by Henry Rizaka who I think is going to be joining us during this week as well. Um, so this is one of the most viewed um, structures resulting from a feature structure Friday and I think it's just because everyone likes a chameleon, right? Um, and this was also picked up by the likes of the BBC um, and they put about the publication. So we've got so many structures in the database, not everyone can look at all of them, it would take quite a long time. And we can also look at things as to what your attention spans are when you look through the database. So when you look through the database, by default, structures are ordered by ref code. And if we look, the most viewed structures actually have a ref code starting in A. Um, and then your attention span starts to decrease. Um, and this is one of the most viewed structures ever in the database and this is one of the structures that Ian mentioned earlier and it's the first structure in the database. So some of the structures also have um, amusing ref codes, so a trivial reason as to why structures are viewed and some of my favourite ref codes uh, are listed here and these form some of the most viewed structures too. Um, one of our developers recently worked out how many ref codes we'd got left um, and how long we could keep on assigning ref codes. And apparently we're all safe. We've got another 4,000 um, 4, years to go, I think. So um, we're all safe in that. So I hope that has given you a brief overview of the types of structures in the CSD and pulled out some of my favourites. I'd love to hear from you over the next couple of days what your favourites are. And I'd also like to know how many of the 121 ref codes you managed to look up on your mobile phones. Um, so I wanted to finish by one of showing you one of my favourite structures, which contains a lot of the seminal um, molecules in the database. Um, perhaps this comes a close second. Um, but most importantly, I wanted to thank all of the people that have been involved with the CSD and all of the 311,565 authors of the CSD. And I want to copy Ian's lead and make you all give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you.